Hey, thanks for checking in the bathtub, sir, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, the trilogy. And look who it is, it's the old butts, our dear friend Larry. How you doing, man? It's been a while. It's strange, ever since we got him off of a murder charge, he was found not guilty and got to carry on living his life. He hasn't been in contact with us, not so much as a, a thank you card, which is a little bit strange, but there we go, he's been moving on. He uh, works as a, uh, a Santa Claus, a Father Christmas guy now, and maybe he can help us with our current case, which is trying to clear um, Edgeworth of murder. It, don't ask. Well, if you have to ask, I'd say watch the previous episode. But this is maybe a, a humorous, um, I don't know, addition to a rather serious case right now. How you doing, Larry? Hey, Larry. There was a murder here last night, and since you work here, have you heard anything? Nick, you're wasting your time. Last night was Christmas Eve. He was with Kyants, obviously, or Kyants. He wouldn't have been standing out here in the cold. Oh! Huh? I think what you just said caught him off guard, Maya. No, no it's, it's just that Kyants is not in town right now. She, she's in Hawaii on, on a photo shoot. A model, I knew it. Well, anyway, there was a murder here on the lake. The trial's tomorrow. Huh, neat. The defendant is Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. Um, Nick? Why would Larry know Edgeworth? Whoa, Nick! You don't mean that Miles Edgeworth. Oh, Deji? Yeah, he's a murder suspect. But, whoa, murder! Huh? You know Mr. Edgeworth, Larry? Yeah, of course. Edgy was in the same class as us in grade school. What? So that's how they're all connected. There's been, like, hints for ages that they all knew each other. But there we go, they went to school, all three of them, together. Oh. Um, um, tell me about the dogs. Huh? Oh, you mean the samurai dogs? Why are they samurai dogs? I... I mean, they kind of look gourd-shaped. Oh, well, originally they were gourd dogs. You know, like guard dogs. Ouch. The samurai thing was Kansas' idea. Oh, but she's my woman, you know. She was all... Change your name and you go, girlfriend. Do you remember that banner? Man, the kids can't get enough of those samurai dogs. Um... Something about that just seems wrong. Oh, and guess what? We're getting a ton of customers here at the lake. What of the big news? The big news? Yeah, Gordy. Gordy? Come on, Maya, you must have heard about Gordy, the creature that lives in the lake. So, Mr. Edgeworth, was your classmate Larry? Wait, hang on, Mr. Edgeworth, Mr. Edgeworth was your classmate, Larry? Okay, I kind of uh, read that wrong, but you get the idea. Yeah, Nick, him and I used to hang out all the time. Wow, I never knew. Don't get me wrong, he's always been kind of a stick in the mud. Studying all the time, trying to be like father. Like his father? Yeah, Edgy's pop was a famous defence lawyer back in the day. Wow. Wait. You said defense lawyer, but he's a prosecuting lawyer. Yeah. Wait a second. But Mr. Edgeworth is a prosecuting attorney. What? Edgy's got a proboscis on his knee? <laughs> what? No, 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 he's a prosecuting attorney. That's like the total opposite of a defense lawyer. Ah, huh. go figure. He always used to talk about defending the weak who were unable to defend themselves. Man, he used to go on and on and on about man's duty to society and all that. What a bore. I wonder what changed his mind though. Do you know Nick? Nick? Cool, Phoenix has been very quiet throughout all this. Um, what's Gordy? Huh? You mean you don't know? It's here, in this very lake. A giant mysterious monster. Gordy! Ah! Uh, monster! Yeah. Check it out! This is not from yesterday's newspaper. There's a photo! Oh my god, there it is! With its long neck! Who are they? And is this... Uh, what's that? A giant life form appears in Gord Lake. Wow! It's r really real! The 
look at this. Hmm. Is this evidence? Nick! A monster! A real monster! Um, yeah. It's probably just a log or something, right? Hey, there's a quote here from the person who took the photo. Uh, what's this? I set the camera to automatic and when we got into the frame, I heard a loud bang, like an explosion. Followed by the sound of something slipping into the water. I wish I could have seen it. Why would there be a sound like an explosion? Larry, could I borrow this article from you? Sure, no problem. That'd be one million dollars. One million? Grow up, Larry. Got the article added. Okay. So the Big Bang is the main thing there. Can we present any of this to you? I don't think so. Well, Larry, it was... It was real, man. It was strange catching up with you. But now we can investigate this again, and the benches. I can't get over the samurai dogs. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, have we read this before? But no. Hey, man, whoever calls their product the original first wins. Why don't you add world famous to the sign? Hey, good idea. What have I done? And what about the seats? We can do these again. Oh, the poppers are gone. Because we took them. Hey, Nick, benches. Let's take a break. Maybe have a dog? I think not. It's too cold to sit and eat hot dogs out here. Wimpy city boy. You should try standing under a freezing waterfall sometime. Why would we ever want to try that? But we got to move. we got to move somewhere. We go back to the boat rental? No. Public bench. The entrance. We could go to the police station? See if uh, Gumshoe's around again? Not Gumshoe in sight. If you're looking for Detective Gumshoe, he's in the questioning room. Apparently, an important witness turned up. Oh, that would be, oh, what's she called? Lotta. Lotta Hart. He'll be in there a while. Lotta Hart. It has to be. Uh oh. Crap. Now what do we do? Can I go back to Edgy Boy? He, he won't even see us. Oh, man. Right coat offices. What is it? Oh, nothing. Just something's been bothering me. Could you show me that autopsy report once more? Hey, uh, I remember now. This guy. He's a lawyer that was at that office Mia worked at. Wait, you don't think that's Edgeworth's dad, do you? You don't think he killed his own father? Hell no. I met him once when I went there to hang out with Sis. That office. Wait, but then wouldn't Phoenix know if it was his dad if they were childhood friends? Wait. You mean Grossberg's office? Right, that guy. That was the last name I expected to come up. Yeah, we ain't seen him in ages. Maybe I should go talk to him. For old time's sake. Yeah, sure, I mean, we can, but I can't remember what voice he had. <laughs> well, what should we do? Um... The police have pretty much made up their minds that Mr. Edgeworth did it. But Mr. Edgeworth won't tell us anything. I guess we should go and look for clues down by the lake. Uh, right. And any more ideas? Well, a penny for your thoughts? Thoughts. Thoughts. Yeah, why won't Mr. Edgeworth tell us anything? And, and, and why did he refuse to ask for our help? What a jerk. I agree, he is super jerky. Proper beef jerky, old Edgeworth. Now let's move to Grossberg. The photo's still not there. Is it meant to be Grossberg? And we've committed to gross, so we'll stay gross. Ahem. Ah, that old familiar clearing of the throat. Ah, you're Mia's something, are, are you not? I was her understudy, yes, a phoenix right. Ah, ah, and you, you're Mia's something too, are you not? A little sister, yes. You've grown. You've come to look a lot like your sister, you know. It takes me back. Ah, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Um, Mr. Greisberg, sir? <laughs> hmm? Ah, yes. 
I beg your pardon. Of course you came here to discuss something. What is it then? Something in the matter? Yeah, kind of. There was a murder last night. A murder? You haven't heard? I, uh, just got up, you see. Well, Miles Edgeworth shot someone with a pistol. Edgeworth? What? Who, who did he shoot? Well, the identity of the victim is still unknown. But this is terrible. Terrible news indeed. I guess he hadn't heard anything. Mr. Greisberg, whatever happened to that painting? Oh, yes. I do not think it shall ever be coming back home to this office. I can't exactly claim it's stolen. I suppose it just is my just desserts. Oh, bitter desserts. Okay, fine, that's all well and good, but we need to present an ex employee of yours here. Hmm? Strange. I feel as though I've seen this man somewhere before. Ah! Did you remember? He was a lawyer, here, in my office. That's Hammond, Robert Hammond. Mr. Hammond? And you say this is the man Mars Ezra shot? Yeah, I, I do. So can you tell us more about Hammond? Uh, who is this Hammond guy anyway? Mr. Hammond. He was the defense attorney in that case. That case? Yes, the DL6 incident. Wait, is that the one where Mia's mum was involved as a spirit medium? DL6, why does that sound familiar? Perhaps you remember? I'm sure someone mentioned it during the trial for Mia's murder. That was the incident where the police were so at a loss they used a spirit medium. Wait, you don't mean... Was that medium my mother? Yes, my dear. The spirit medium, Misty Fay, your mother, contacted the spirit of the victim. But the case was a loss. No conviction was made. So let's ask more about the DL6. It's crazy. This is coming back into play after so long ago. The DL6 incident, yes, happened 15 years ago. A very strange case indeed. They never caught the criminal, right? Correct. Misty Fay used her powers to talk to the spirit of the late victim. A testimony led to charges being laid against one man. But Mr. Hammond won the case, and the suspect was declared innocent. And the police blamed my mother, calling her a fraud. You were the one who helped her out then, right, Mr. Grossberg? Uh, uh, yes, yes, quite. Thank you. The, no, please, the, don't mention it. DL6. Never thought I'd hear that name again. But wait, what does that case have anything to do with Mr. Edgeworth? It has everything to do with Mr. Edgeworth, my dear. The victim in the DL6 incident was none other than his father, Gregory, uh, Gregory Edgeworth. Holy crap, that's all connected. And that's why... Edgeworth always wants to make people guilty because when it came to the case of the murder of his father, the suspect got off free, which is why he hates the defence. Okay, we got it. What? His father? Uh, if you want to know more, you should ask him yourself. Show him this. I'm sure he'll talk to you. Wait, this is a photograph of my mother. Misty Faye's photos Mum, Misty Faye's mum's photo. There we go, that's better. Sometimes the order of the words don't quite make sense in my head, but we say them anyway. Add it to the court record. Thank you, big rotund gross man. Let's get back to the detention centre. Is he there? Oh, what's this? I was hoping you'd gotten my message the first time. Edruff, what about your defence? Ah. It's no concern of yours. Guess he hasn't found anyone yet. Well, take this! Oh. Edgeworth. It's only been a matter of hours since you last visited. Yet you've made incredible progress in your investigation. I'll admit it, I'm impressed, right? You were always single-minded in your work, though. Once you start on something, you always see it through, don't you? 
about the DL6 incident? Right. DL6. I didn't want you to find out about it. That is why I refused your offer to defend me. I'm sorry if it sounded like I thought you weren't up to the job. I just wanted to keep you away from DL6. So, do you still think it would have been better for me to stay away? I don't know. But, I see no point in hiding anything from you now. Very well. Ask whatever you like, and I will answer to the best of my abilities. Okay, here we go. Progress is being made. The DL6 incident was when my father died. Oh. Right before my eyes. He was shot and killed, and I saw it all. My memories from that time are foggy. I suppose it's a self-defense mechanism. In any case, a suspect was arrested, and my Windows Defender summary just popped up. I'm very sorry for the noise you may have just heard, and it was a man. It's pretty clear he was the only one who would have killed my father. The spirit medium they used to talk to my late father said the same thing. Cool, so we don't hate Misty Faye, that's good then. We don't hate Misty Faye, he hates Hammond. There was an attorney by the name of Robert Hammond that cleared the suspect's name. And Hammond is the victim in the Gord Lake murder. Correct. Um, that spirit medium, that was my mum. What? You mean you're... It's strange. I thought that terrible incident was about to end. And now, this. About to end. The D06 incident happened 15 years ago. 15 years ago. On December 28th. December 28th? The statute of limitations on the case runs out in three days. What? Um, Nick, what does that mean? When a case's statute of, statute of limitations runs out legally, the case never happened. Three days from now. Deal 6 will be closed. Forever. What happened to the suspects? The one who got off innocent? I don't know. He disappeared from public view. Nobody knows where to. If he's still alive, he'd be about 50 years old now. I guess I can understand why he'd go into hiding. It would be hard to live a normal life after being a murder suspect in such a big case. Um, so, was your father a lawyer? He was. Gregory Edgeworth. He was quite famous at the time, apparently. So, you were sort of trying to follow in his footsteps? Uh, I'd rather not talk about it. Wow, okay. Um... Thank you for opening up, finally. Showed that. Is there anything else we can show? Maybe go back to Gumshoe now? That's all I can think of. He's got to be out of speaking to a lot of heart. What's going on here? What's wrong, detective? This wild lady comes in here just a while ago. Says she came to talk to y'all after hearing what Mr. Wright had to say. What's this all about, pal? Lot of heart. Why are you going around finding more witnesses? You want to give us Edgeworth of the death sentence, pal? But no, not at all. Just, I mean, she did see something. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't go around covering up evidence. Uh, you trying to say something about the way I do my job? No, sir. Oh, God. So, what did Miss Hart say? She says she saw Mr. Edgeworth fire the pistol. What? She even had a photograph to prove it. Right. I saw it too. But you really can't tell from the photo who it is shooting. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. She said it'll drop the quality of might, but should let us see who's who. She can do that. Okay, so there's going to be an enlarged photograph that shows Edgeworth in the act. Great. Just great. In any case, she's going to be the one testifying tomorrow. Huh? What happened to the other witness? Well, apparently there was a cancellation. Cancellation? I'm afraid tomorrow is going to be the life or death of poor Mr. Edgeworth. We've got a witness that said she saw the very moment of the murder. 
Oh, we got a photo taken when the shot rang out. I'd say that sounds like a pretty unwinnable case. But wait, what did Mia used to say? If he's innocent, there's got to be something I've overlooked. It sounds like Mr. Edgeworth is going to ask the state to assign a public defender. I was just asked to file the paperwork. But you still got time, pal. Go talk to him again, for me, please. You have to convince him. You have to make him let you defend him, please. I know you're the only one who can do it, pal. You're the only one who can save Mr. Edgeworth. Please, come true, calm it, please. So, do we present any of this then? Or do we go straight back to Edgeworth? Sounds like it. Oh no. Is then... This, maybe? Oh. Who would have thought there'd be a photo? Edgeworth, did you shoot him? What do you think, right? I don't think you're the kind to point a gun at anyone, no. So you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. Right. It pains me to ask you this now. I know! He wants to defend you! Yes. Will you? There we go. Cool, I thought we were going to struggle a bit there, what to do next, but we got him to ask us. Ah, oh, who could have guessed this day would come? Not me. This is my chance to finally pay you back. Pay him back? Pay me back? For what? I don't remember ever doing anything for you. Never mind. I guess you don't really need to know. Huh? My letter of request. Please give it to Detective Gumshoe. No problem, my dude. Well, I guess we should... What's that? Oh, earthquake! Nick! There's a big one! Ah, it's coming down! Oh, phew! That was scary! Huh? Where's Edgeworth? There! He's on the floor, in a ball, shivering! I guess he doesn't do so well with earthquakes. I've heard her running, but curling up in a ball. Well, I guess we're done. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't seem like he's going to stand up anytime soon. Let's go, Nick! Uh, right. We have to give Edgeworth's letter of request to Detective Gumshoe. Wait, what? We're just going to leave him on the floor? Dude, help him out! You there, guard! Pick that man up! Fine. So, okay, that really triggered something inside of Edgeworth. He don't like loud noises, maybe? Uh, present this. Take that, Gummy. Look what I got. Hey, you did it, pal! Glad I waited till the last minute to file those papers. I'll rip them up and start new ones for you. Thanks, Detective. Well, see you in court tomorrow then. Good luck, pal. Hey! You guys feel that earthquake a little while back? I was worried. Worried? We're fine. I've lived out here my whole life. I'm pretty used to them by now. Oh, I wasn't worried about you two. I was worried about Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, right. He did seem to overreact a little, now that you mention it. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty big quake. I gotta go check on him. You two go eat and get your rest for tomorrow's trial. Later. Ah, oh, what are we missing here? I wonder what it is with Mr. Edgeworth and earthquakes. I wonder. He was never that scared of them when he was in school. Very interesting. Then again, I only really got to know him in 4th grade. He transferred to another school after that. I wonder what happened to Edgeworth. To be continued, first day done, there we go, hey, yo! Oh! Farm time for a trial. Yeah, save that damn content. Of course I do, which slot shall we overwrite? How about number 3, which is still in the Samurai? I don't even care, just want to get back to the game. Time to turn, uh, tear down a lot of heart. She seems a bit of a, a bitch, really, don't she? Karma? That's right. Manfred from Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40 year career. He is a god of prosecution, right? A god! Not a single case! He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Huh. Sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. 
Oh. You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. But what? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. Oh, so, so he was your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty. What a creep. Oh, wait. Maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years! He's as ruthless as me, times 20. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Uh, Maya? Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh... I can't. Sorry. I tried, I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Uh, oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. Oh, it's going to be so weird. Boxing Day trial. Can you believe it? Should be eating leftover turkey. Playing with your presents. Wow, is that the Von? Von? Karma thing? Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defence is ready, Your Honour. Um, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? He looks so cool. Fool. Do you seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? <laughs> right, <laughs> my apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well, your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Uh, uh I think, of course, this should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I called the detective in charge in this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Hello, Gummy. How you doing, man? Describe the incident. Now. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late Christmas Eve, around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now, there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12.10am, she heard two pistol shots. Two. So she should have two photos. Then, the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Hmm. Overhead map, thank you. Testified to the courts about the arrest. And now. Oh, oh, wait, Mr. Von Kahn. Yes. Actually, I'm the one that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Oh, the finger wag and the judge. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. <laughs> yes, of course. You're quite right. No, he's not. Okay, the arrest of Edgeworth. Let's see how this pans out. A man called this station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's when we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So, we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Is that it? Pretty tight. Hmm, oh, I see you very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now! Jesus. So we need to question everything there. Man called in. Wait, like rang? Or, or popped into the station? You received a call from a man. Uh, yep. Yeah. But you said there was a woman camping there. 
She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? Whoa! Did you hear that objection? Did you hear it? It's like the guttural yell of Godzilla said objection there. That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Yeah, the other one cancelled. Imagine it's the bloke. Oh. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today, I've summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping? A lot of heart. What happened next, detective? Get into the scene of the crime. Yeah, fast as you could. Well done. How long was it between receiving the report and your arrival at the lake? Oh, well, I'd say it was about three minutes. That's pretty fast. Our motto for the month is get there quick. Detective, you will refrain from casually revealing department secrets. Uh, uh, sir, sorry, sir. I look forward to your next year's salary review. Oh, gumshoe. So much to look forward to these days. This is no time for dejected, dejected daydreaming. Continue. D yes, sir. I see you found Mr. Edgeworth. Fine. What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Detective, the court requires the facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the force? Facts only, detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. Uh, yes, sir. Man, he's got his share of objections. Did he suspect him anything at all? Why didn't he think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep, trusting relationship with the prosecutors. Detective. The court isn't interested in your musings. Deep, trusting, poppycock. I've never heard so many flippant comments from an active detective on the force. Oh. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue now. And then you found the body. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the heart. Oh, the wrong voice. Bailey. <laughs> Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well. The court accepts this bullet into evidence. It's the bullet, but we heard two gunshots. So we had to arrest Edgeworth. But why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe. That is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right. S sorry, Your Honor. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? Huh. Ugh. He has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't tisk them. There were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. There were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. But what? Order, order. So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon? Yeah, yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Uh, accepted into evidence. Pistol added, fired three times. Well, there we go. Where's the other two bullets? Members of the court. We now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Y y yes, sir. Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Y yes, the, the ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick! What does he mean? Ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Uh, Nick! He's glaring at me! Tis. Very well. I'll explain. Actually, Judge, you do it. 
Huh? Uh, uh, me? Um, <clears throat> uh, ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was, without a doubt, fired from this pistol. This pistol which, as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. Order! Order! This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge. I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However... You wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess. Which will last 10 minutes. Judge? <laughs> yes? What are you doing? A 10 minute recess, now! But, 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 wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. I, I, yes! Oh my god! I wonder if this guy's calling all the shots! <clears throat> this court will take a 10 minute recess. Who's running this court anyway? This is rough. Oh, but it's missing three bullets, and there's only two shots fired, apparently. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon. Ah, hmm. And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. Drew, was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. What? But you must believe me. I didn't shoot him. Th then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but I thought at the time that he had shot himself. Y you mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh. How am I going to convince anyone of that? Say, Maya. Huh? W what? Any progress with Mia? Oh. Sorry, it's no good. Ugh. I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? Oh, we need you here, it's fine. No, of course not. I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the fault that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defence. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Ugh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. Really? Whoa, 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 whoa. right. Don't jinx this case any more than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh? Oh, sorry. Whoops. You must have a heart condition. Are we back in the court? No! Court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? Oh, the victim was shot in the heart. Um, Edgeworth may have a weak heart. She's called Lotta Hart. What's with the heart, man? Lotta Hart, you are a research student at a university. That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand? You yeah, need to learn some manners. <laughs> that finger wag is the best thing I've ever seen. <clears throat> Understand? Uh, yeah, I understand, I understand. Uh, very well. Your testimony, please. Okay, what you got to say, Lotta? It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. 
I heard this bang come up from up the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Then, there was another bang. There was nearly a thing on the lake with that boat. So there's two shots, but only the second one hit the dude. Enough. Huh? Judge, she happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo. Accepted as evidence. Well, well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. Oh, order! I will remove people from this courtroom if I do not have order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake. So, the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Order! 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 I will have order! Well, Judge. The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well. This court finds the defendant. But wait, Your Honor! I haven't cross examined the witness yet. Cross examination? We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words, and they all read guilty. You lose. Or do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Oh, uh, yes, because she only had two shots, but three were fired. Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then I will have you held in contempt of court. But, uh, Nick, contempt? Contempt of court, you know. I guess I understand. Well, what are you going to do? Do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts in her testimony? Yes. I think I noticed one little thing. Well, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right, let's take him on. Y yeah. I've got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. Tis, tis. Very well. I pray for your sake, this isn't a waste of time. I love how the judge is like a genuine character as well. So, we got a testimony to cross-examine, but it won't be right now. It will be next episode. I think the contradiction is there was only two shots. And the gun that was fired was free. Let me just see seconds. What have we got here? The murder weapon fired three times. That's got to be it. Anyway, what a turn of events. This Von Karma sack, Karma Von Baron, I can't remember his name. You know, the evil guy with the super deep voice. I hate him. I can't wait to start like making him think maybe he's not going to win this case. That will be the most satisfying moment yet. If you enjoyed this episode of Phoenix Wright, please go ahead and leave a like. It does help me out so much, so thank you if you choose to do so. Want to see more? We are going to keep steaming ahead with this trial. Hopefully buy ourselves another day. Hopefully another day after that if we have to. Please go ahead and subscribe. I can bring it all to you. Got any questions you want to raise? What do you think of the Baron? Any big sack? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll make sure I get back to you. Alright? See you!